with the disassembly of the axles. So just like with the front, this is the back. I've just disassembled these ones. And in this particular case, one of them did actually have lock washers on it. If I can grab it, you can see there. But uh, of course, they're all going to get replaced anyway. So now I've got this pretty much this axle free. And what I'm going to do here is start from the outside in. So I'm just going to start pulling these two rims off. Once I've got those rims off, I can then start having a look at the hubs, etc. Um, on this side, you can see that there is a brake mechanism there. However, on this side, it's been removed um, with the um, intention of replacing them, uh, which I will do anyway. So I've got the actual uh, brake drums. So this hasn't got any brake drums or anything like that in it. Um, this side has. So um, we'll just, we'll just um, start dismantling. Might as well. I've decided to do the back first because it's a lot easier. I don't have to deal with the swivels because I think I might have to use the 109 swivels. So what I'll do is I'll just look at this back one first. So let's get um, to taking the rims off. Um, this one's got all its all its studs in there, which is nice. I think the other side might be missing some. But anyway, one thing at a time. Let's try to take these off first. Uh, both of these axles are on the stand. The diff is pointing down, that's the heaviest position, so um, when I take the wheels off, they're not going to, um, it's not going to move. Now the whole hub's coming out, the whole stud I should say. That one's fine. And I'll continue doing that. You can see here, unfortunately, four of the five just came out with the entire um, stud. So that's really disappointing. But anyway, apparently this is supposed to be pretty common. Right, so there's not much left on this side, obviously. There's no brake assembly to remove. Um, there's still quite a lot of dirt and so on there. So what I'm going to do is now I'm now going to try to take the other side out. And hopefully I won't have that same scenario as I have here. Side wasn't too bad, only lost two. And um, they were actually quite loose, as in they weren't um, seized. Right, so um, no, like, no time like the present. What I might do is I might take this side off, given that uh, the other side's already out. So there's a couple of um, flathead screws there so we'll go ahead and undo those hopefully we can and they're not stuck but a little bit of diesel may help somewhat in this area <laughs> So now, yeah. sometimes these come out okay and then other times you need to give them a bit of a tap. A little bit scored. Okay. And you can see that's a relatively new piston there, so I won't have to worry about replacing those. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Um, there's two, there's a lock tab that runs across the two of these. Obviously we've got to flatten them before we can take the bolts off. Let's 
So that's what it looks like with the lock washer. Okay. And now that's free to come out of the little uh, recess area there. Okay, so just prise that out. So that's the top one. And the bottom one, there's a spring on that side, you can see here. It's a bit better to see now. And uh, something with a screwdriver you can generally pop those out. Okay. So that's the long one on that side, which joins onto, yep, yeah, like so. That's that, which is good. Next thing to do is to, uh, well, we can't take this backing plate until we actually remove this whole hub assembly here. Um, you can see the back plate's got all these nuts and bolts that go through it. So pretty much that's the last thing to remove. So the next thing is to start from the from the tip and work our way through the dry flange, um, the hub assembly itself, etc., etc., and we just start putting things apart. Just go nice and gently. The cap comes off, and now you've got the castellated nut. with the split pin on it. Okay. So obviously things like the gaskets and seals and lock lock washers and so on, or lock tabs, they all gotta be replaced. Okay. And then that will come out. I say important here is making sure you don't lose any of the um, washers that are there and so on as we pull things apart. I mean obviously we need to check for end play or end float as we're rebuilding. But it's nice to try to keep things. So now to take these off. Got to slip out through those splines there. Original gasket there, and we've got a lot of oil being pumped out there, which I kind of should have planned for. I'm kind of glad to see that there's oil there though. So that's a good sign. Alright, so what I'll try to do now is See if I can separate the shaft from the from the spline there. There you go. And that my friends looks pretty damn good. Except we don't know what the um what the spline wear is here like. That's how it fits. Okay, so generally if you're um, driving along and you suddenly lose drive, one of the things that could happen is that um, these splines have just basically stripped out. No. Okay, no, that's, that's good. I'm happy with that. There doesn't seem to be much there. The fact that I had to hammer it out also is an indication that it hasn't been flogged out. So that's good. So these videos are quite detailed, I know, um, but um, that's the whole aim, I think, anyway. All right, so internally here it looks pretty clean as well.
and I won't be able to take this out I don't think because I run out of room so I'll have to make some room where I can take these out all together so far so good um, now taking off this nut with the lock washer there will then release the entire hub all right I think that's enough for uh, this video I'll continue on with a, with a series of of these um, pulling the axle apart except um, what I'll do is I said I'll start with this rear one here first it's an easier one to do uh, no hubs no nothing to worry about sorry swivels to worry about is in the steering so we'll continue on with the next one watch this space and thanks for watching